What up, watch peeps? This is not the first Woolbrook I reviewed. It's not even the second. This is the third. First, I reviewed their Mecha Quartz World Timer, and then I reviewed the Mecha Quartz Chronograph. Both very cool. Go check those videos out if you're interested. But this time around, I have their latest installment, the Skin Diver Automatic. All use pretty much the same case, which I think of as the genre defining skin diver case. It's pretty good. So without further ado, let's check it out. I'm Pete, and we are chilling with watches. Wrist check. Oh yeah, we're in the Synchron military today. Just got this thing in. I'll blast up a quick unboxing video maybe and uh, definitely do a review soon. But first impression, this thing is so much fun and super awesome. But what we're here to look at today is the Woolbrook Skin Diver Automatic. Now I'm a big fan of their very kind of simple packaging here. Just a cardboard box. They usually give you a couple extra spring bars, which is very nice because their bracelets use quick release spring bars. It's nice to have a couple extra of those on hand. You get your certificate of authenticity, warranty card, all the information you should need should you require support. And then your watch comes in one of these reusable single watch carriers, which you guys know I am a big fan of. Oh yeah, check that baby out. The Woolbrook Skin Diver Automatic. Now this is actually a 39 millimeter case, but it's 40 at the bezel. So it presents as a very true 40 millimeter watch, which I often like to use it in my comparisons for that reason. Colors, these come in a bunch of cool ones. There's orange, white, a couple different blues, different color looms. I'll put a link in the description for you to check out, but they all look good. Price-wise, they come in around 450 bucks on a strap or about $500 on a bracelet. Now, they usually release two versions of each watch. The Woolbrook, like I have here, and then there's usually a Pro version, which is branded Douglas, with a little truer to vintage with an acrylic crystal and things like that. So instead of the cardinal numbers like the World Timer had, this one has even numbers with sticks at the odds, a little different dial layout. Now I love these matte printed dials. I just think they have a really nice vintage aesthetic. They're very legible. And this green loom I think is super cool. If you were to Google vintage Woolbrook watches, you would see they all have kind of this, not all, but most are black with this green loom. So I think it's really cool that they kept this colorway and it appeals to me for that reason. Now, this model also has a dive time bezel instead of the world timer bezel that you've seen previously. Full minute track all the way around. Again, something I am a big fan of. And I think that is something that the watch community was asking for. So kudos to Woolbrook for listening. Me personally, I really like the world timer bezel. It, it, like I said, very true to their vintage Woolbrooks. And honestly, do I ever really use the bezel for anything other than fidget spinning. Now this model, I'll tell you, the bezel action feels much improved over the World Timer bezel that I originally had. It's a little more precise and clicky where the other one felt a little more springy, if that's the right word. The bezel uses a really nice kind of thin coin edge, very easy to use. And the case is where this watch really shines for me. It's got all the classic kind of skin diver goodness. You got your straight cut lugs, both at the case and at the end, at the strap and at the end of the lugs. This almost like umbrella shape to the, um, to the lugs where it, it curves not only this way, but it also has a curve this way. So it really hugs the wrist, very comfortable. And this one is fully brushed, case sides, top of the lugs. It's got a great crown, again, coin edge grip, really nice size for the case, and it is signed. Of course, it has drilled lugs, which is something that you would have found on vintage skin divers. Their case backs are always awesome. This one with the clown trigger fish, and these are actually, I think, all numbered limited editions if you can see there at the bottom 49 of 949 so that is also pretty cool if that's something that appeals to you now this is one of their vulcanized rubber straps it is branded woolbrook and it is one of 
the nicest Tropic straps I've handled. The FKM Tropics are a great value, but diminishing returns kind of kick in here, but these are definitely nicer straps. They have a more, I don't know what you want to say, more crisp, more defined texture to them than do, say, like the FKM Tropics. It's not quite as vivid. The flex and feel is top notch. Also, it's a little more shiny than these FKMs. You see they're like a little more dull. Now this is the first automatic Wooly I've had in, so let's throw it on the time graph and see how it's running. Looks like it's settling in somewhere around plus four, plus five seconds a day. That is fantastic as far as the accuracy goes. The amplitude is showing a little low. I don't know, again, if that's because I didn't put a full wind on it. I usually do about 15 turns before I throw it on the time graph to see where it's at. Beat error, there is none or to point one, so nothing to worry about there. So altogether, you know, I think this is running really well. Going over the dimensions, we are looking at, as I mentioned, a 39 millimeter case, but 40 millimeters at the bezel. It is 47.8 millimeters from lug to lug and 13 millimeters thick with 20 millimeter lugs. Going over some of the other specs, we are looking at a nice box sapphire crystal. It uses C7 Green Loom, which we'll take a look at. It's running the Miyota 8315 movement. And as a skin diver, these feature 100 meters of water resistance. And on this vulcanized rubber tropic strap, it came in at 81 grams. Let's take a look at it on wrist. And here's how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. As you can see, it is a nice, tidy little package. I think this is a very comfortable, easy to wear watch. Let's take a look at it side by side, some other watches. All right, so first up, what we have is the Invicta Pro Diver, which is another 40 millimeter watch, basically your five digit sub case layout. And as you can see, it has a larger dial, which presents a little larger than this 40 millimeters. But I do think this wears probably smaller, or at least presents smaller than 40 millimeters when you're looking at it dial on. Next up, take a look at it next to the Seiko SKX, about 42 and a half. Again, smaller dial makes this thing wear smaller than its true size. I think the Woolbrook feels smaller on wrist than the SKX does. Uh, lastly, from a Vostok Bros, how about a 710 Scuba Dude? I forget what size the Scuba Dudes are across, but again, smaller dials always make these watches present as smaller, but even still, I think this thing, I think when you saw it on wrist, it wears and presents as really like a true 40 millimeter watch. All right, lastly, let's check out that C7 loom. Might be a first. Peep the loom. And I was actually quite impressed with how bright this C7 loom is. It looks really good. For comparison's sake, here it is next to an SKX using Lumi Bright, which we all know is bright as a torch, but I think this hangs in there really well. I dig the C7 Loom. So there it is, the Woolbrook Skin Diver Automatic. This thing has a really nice clean design that I think a lot of people were clamoring for. Me personally, I like that World Timer bezel, even though I think World Timers are way too hard to use because of daylight savings time. But I think that with the 369 dial, but in an automatic with the Sapphire Crystal, you know, one of the combinations I didn't have, I think that's what I want. All right, before I let you go, sneaker check, just wearing my Jordan 11s, and that's it, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.